Hey guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Beth. And for today's video, I am going to be talking about and demoing some products that are going to be on sale uh, during the upcoming week of the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty. Uh, so I kind of talked about the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty in more depth in my first video for week one, uh, where I talked about kind of some strategies and just things to think about. But in a nutshell, uh, Ulta places a select few items on sale every day uh, during this 21 day stretch for 50% off. So uh, if there are any items that you've been wanting to try or any uh, long-term favorites that you want to restock, uh, it's a great time to check out what's on sale. So I plan to structure this video a little bit differently from last week's video, just to make it a little bit easier for me to edit. Uh, so basically what I'm going to do, obviously I already have the makeup applied uh, that I'm going to be talking about, uh, but I'm going to go through the upcoming week in chronological order, and then I'm going to have the demo portion at the end of the video. Uh, so the demo portion will kind of be in order of application, but I will have timestamps both for the days that I'm talking about in the first half and the products in the second half. So if you just want to skip around or come back to this video for a particular day, hopefully that will make it easier on both of us. Uh, so let's go ahead and jump in here. Let's scoot over so I can insert the photos. So I'm starting with Sunday, March 19th and going through the following Saturday. Uh, so on March 19th, it's interesting because they split it into, I guess what's going to be online and in store, and then there's a whole section of app only steals for the 19th, so make sure that you're checking both sections. Uh, I will have a link to the calendar page down below, so if you just want to uh, follow along uh, there, you can. Uh, but the first day on the 19th, we have some Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundations. It looks like they have at least three different variations. And um, I haven't tried any of these, but I know for a lot of people, the classic Double Wear is their kind of holy grail foundation that they always go back to. So great time to pick it up for only $24. We have the Anastasia Brow Wiz, which I'm wearing today in the shade Taupe. Uh, that'll be on sale for $12.50, down from $25. Uh, so great high-end uh, brow pencil if you like that product. Uh, as I say later on, I like it as a brow pencil. I just typically reach for like a tinted brow gel over a brow pencil, so that's just my preference. Uh, the Kiehl's Midnight Recovery Concentrate. I know, again, this is pretty popular. This is a first-time steal. Uh, this product, as I've mentioned before, I think this product has a lot of essential oil or fragrance ingredients in it. Like it has, oh gosh, lavender oil, citronella, geranial, etc. So that may not concern you, but for me personally, because I have more sensitive skin, I just try to avoid those. Uh, and then we also have a few brushes from the It Brushes for Ulta. Uh, the Tapered Powder Bronzer, the Precision Shadow Brush, and the Soft Focus Blush Brush will be on sale. Uh, and that one is an online only offer, and it also says it's a first time steal. I think that's a first time steal for those particular brushes because I'm pretty sure I've seen it brushes for Ulta in the sale before. Uh, moving on to the app only steals, uh, we have the Laura Mercier Translucent Loose Setting Powder, the Light Catcher. This is an app exclusive. All these are app exclusives. Uh, and that one, I thought I had heard good things about it. <laughs> it's funny because I specifically thought I heard Patty Alonzo say good things about it. Uh, but I was watching her video on the sale and she said it wasn't a good product. So I might have been thinking about something else, I don't know, but I'm not a huge loose powder fan anyway. So at one time I was thinking I might look into that, but now I'm thinking I will skip it. Uh, we have the Kate Somerville Eradicate Daily Foaming Cleanser. Uh, this one I think is probably gonna be too harsh for my kind of more dry, sensitive skin type. It says it has 3% sulfur. Uh, it does have fragrance. Uh, and as I mentioned last time, like I usually always copy and paste ingredient lists into the Paula's Choice Beautypedia page uh, just to see what pops up. And I think it's at least helpful for calling out certain ingredients that may irritate uh, more sensitive skin. But if you do suffer from, I guess, more severe acne, it may be worth looking into. 
Uh, we have the Sugar Advanced Therapy Recovery Lip Mask. Again, that one has some like fragrance type ingredients that I would just prefer not to put on my lips as a kind of I guess reparative hydrating treatment. Uh, we have the Teamy Blends Hibiscus Infused Vitamin C Serum. Uh, I don't know anything really about their skincare uh, other than I think they're connected to some kind of tea, right? Tea brand. Uh, we also have some Paracone MD products, the Vitamin C Ester Vito Brightening Moisturizer, the High Potency Growth Factor Firming and Lifting Serum, and the High Potency Classics Hyaluronic Intensive Moisturizer. Uh, none of those kind of call out to me, so I'll be skipping on those. And then um, one more product to talk about before I have the two that I do have things to say about. Uh, the Urban Skin RX Pro Strength. This is the Pro Strength Hydro Balance Brightening Moisture Infusion. That will be 18 down from 36. Uh, don't know anything about this brand or this product. Okay, so let's talk about the Derma Flash. So this is the Mini Precision Peach Fuzz Removal Device and Refills. You do get some refills when you purchase the device. I think it comes in two shades. There's a light pink and a more vibrant hot pink. Uh, and normally it's 69, so it'll be on sale for about 35. Yeah, I want to say you get a set of four. Oh, you get two maybe, or one in the device and then two. I have this device, but I just don't remember. Uh, and then the refills, you get one, two, three, four, eight for 29, so they'd be on sale for about 15. So I have both the large Derma Flash and the Mini. Uh, I think this is still their like current model. I don't think they've redesigned it. Uh, but this one, um, it has a base that plugs in via USB. And this is where the actual blade goes. So it pops in like that and then this lights up when it's charging. And uh, I don't think I have any blades out here, but this is where the blade would go. So you press the eject button and you're supposed to put a new blade on every time you use it for sanitary reasons. Uh, this one I think also has multiple speeds. I think this one probably needs a charge actually. But anyway, I think this one has multiple speeds and I just wanted to kind of give you, I guess, a size comparison. Uh, and this one is rechargeable as it clearly needs to be. Uh, the other one, the mini one, is this size. So the blade length is like so. And this one, they, they say it has some kind of like massage ball. Like this is just like a metal ball that rolls around. So I guess you could use that to kind of depuff if you wanted. I don't think I've ever used it that way. Uh, and I purchased this because, I don't know, I thought it would be nice for kind of getting around like my eyebrows and stuff. But honestly, I think I still reach for this one over this one just to kind of do the peach fuzz removal. You know, people tell you you don't need a device like this. You can just use one of those like twinkle razors or whatever. Personally, I like... I like the way this feels in the hand and not only is it supposed to remove peach fuzz, it's also supposed to do some uh, dermaplaning, which is like some kind of light exfoliation of the dead skin. So uh, personally, I like having the large one. Uh, the large one is about $200 though. So I think if you really just want to kind of dip your toe in before you invest in something like this potentially it may be worth looking at and if you do really love this device and you want something that is obviously going to be more travel friendly uh, then maybe it would be worth picking up for home use i just don't really use this and i guess i just don't travel regularly enough that i feel like i need to take this with me um, I have like a little foldable kind of face razor in case there's anything really egregious that pops up. I think this is only one speed if I didn't mention and <laughs> don't do what I did and struggle to get this um, cap open forever because I was thinking it was a twist and like I asked my husband to try. Um, it's just a, a pull on and pull off type situation. I think there's a little bit of a catch or something in there but really it's just pull on pull off and this takes one triple a battery just something to consider in terms of how it works or whatever but yeah i guess for 35 dollars, it's not that i don't recommend it i like the bigger one a lot more but again like it's a lot more money too 
Uh, just keep in mind again that you do have to keep up with the blade uh, replacements. Uh, the set comes with, I don't think I have the original box for the, the device, but I do have, that's what the blades for the large one look like, by the way. So you would like slide it in and it would kind of pop out. They, they come with like some cleansing gel and moisturizer. I think you're supposed to use this on a dry face after you've cleansed. Um, so you can use whatever cleanser and moisturizer you want. You don't have to use theirs. It's not like the uh, activator gel for the new face, uh, but the blades themselves are kind of unique to the device. Yeah, I hope that's helpful. Let me know if you have any questions about it down below. Like I said, I don't think it's a bad buy. I think you should just be kind of aware of maybe some of the pros and cons. Uh, speaking of pros and cons, so we have some press-on nails that I'm actually wearing. Uh, these are the OPI French Press. Um, so these are like a French manicure square nail um, type effect. And these are the glue-on kind. I've kind of experimented with different, I guess, press-on nails over the last few years. Like I started with the impress kind that have the like tabs. Recently I've kind of ventured into the glue on territory. Uh, like I tried the static nails and is that the only brand I've tried that's glue on? It might be. It's funny because like whenever I look down at my nails I just feel like I'm, I'm one of the girls in my like senior class of high school that got their nails like acrylics done for prom uh, which I've never done. But anyway um, getting back to this particular set. So what I was trying to get at, there are pros and cons to, I think, most types of manicures, either um, the time it takes to apply, the time it takes to remove, the expense involved. So I think it just kind of comes down to what your tolerance is or what you prioritize. I like having these, but I don't know that it's my favorite type of manicure. I think for me personally, where I see press on nails like this being the most advantageous is if you want length added to your nail or if you want like crazy nail art designs that would be more difficult to do yourself. If you want just a pure solid color on your nails, again, like if you want them to be longer, maybe, but honestly, I still need to upload my review of this, but. Um, I've discovered the Manicurist LED gel polish and for me it's kind of a game changer because it gives me the benefit of applying gel nails at home so you get that kind of instant dry effect. I've had the manicure last like two weeks and it removes like in a couple minutes. So for me it's kind of the best of both worlds because personally I kind of hate using traditional nail polish and then either I'm clumsy or I'm impatient. <laughs> I don't know which one is more flattering. But yeah, it's like I'd always like ding them on something or I would just feel like I'm stuck there waiting for them to dry. So I kind of like the instant gratification of knowing like my nails are done and I can get up and do things. Uh, even though the actual like layers and waiting for them to cure and everything takes a little bit of time. Um, so I love that and then the wear is great and uh, what always I guess frustrated me about traditional gels that I tried from various brands, like OPI has their own gel nail polish as well. The removal was always a pain in the butt and I felt like I was always damaging my nails actually getting the polish off. Uh, so that is for me kind of my ideal system, but again, it's kind of like traditional nail polish. You can do nail art with gel, but it just takes a little bit more, I guess, finesse. Um, so these kind of have that instant gratification factor with like static nails or other sets. I don't know that they advertise these as being reusable necessarily. I guess I just always find that the nails are in really great shape after I take them off, like just the wear. Um, you get 30 nails in here, by the way. And I applied these on Wednesday afternoon and it's now Friday evening. So um, I've had these on a couple days and they've gone through at least two showers. You know, I can see there's maybe a little bit of glue on some of the nails and like the white French tip is kind of worn off in a few places. And the thing about the sheer styles like this is that you really have to be careful to kind of get the glue 
on evenly. Otherwise, you can kind of see where there's some pockets where um, the glue didn't really apply evenly. So like from a distance, you really can't tell. And honestly, you're probably spending more time looking at your nails than anyone else's. So that's, you know, just something to note. Um, this one, like I said, they have 30 nails. I think, honestly, the ring finger nails that I chose are perhaps a little bit smaller in relation to the other nails on the rest of my hand. Like, you can tell if I, if I do that. So I feel like they worked for me kind of width-wise, but length-wise, I think they're a little bit short. You can see I don't really have like a free edge, really. And when you're placing different nails over your fingernails to try and size them, you're not necessarily getting the full picture. Uh, I think it is the kind of thing where if you find a brand that you like and you like how their nails are shaped and sized, then you probably will purchase from them repeatedly, or if you're just more experienced with doing fake nails, I don't know. Um, this one, this was like the, the pointer or index finger, the middle finger, the ring finger that are displayed. You can tell I just kind of went down the right side. And then underneath we have, and this has like a plastic so they don't go everywhere. I did kind of like how Static Nails has like all the nails kind of laid out. Um, it has this little sizing guide or whatever where you can place down the nails as you size them, which is kind of nice. And then this little bag had like the thumb and the pinky sizes, I guess because they're less aesthetic <laughs> or less um, uniform. Uh, a like orange stick, cuticle stick or whatever they're called, um, the glue and a like buffer and file little board here. The buffer, it felt like my nails were getting smoother, which I always thought the purpose of these was to rough up the nail a little bit so the glue would stick better. But anyway, it feels pretty smooth. And this I think you can use to actually, to shape the nails. So perhaps not as ideal for like a French manicure, um, but if you have maybe a solid color and you want to adjust the length or whatever, I can see that. Uh, Static Nails also does that. There's the little alcohol pad. I think this is pretty much just alcohol. So if these were in good shape and you needed to reapply, you could just grab any old alcohol pad. The little tear off said tear to express. And I guess, you know, I was kind of looking at the box and the instructions and it was kind of making me laugh how, how much they were using that kind of press um, metaphor, I guess. Um, like this is the French press um, style. It says hot off the press. Uh, but you really, you do, you do have to press kind of hard on your nail. Like you want to give it a good press. And uh, after you apply, I applied the glue both to my fingernail and to the back of the nail. Uh, and I try to kind of, I guess, press down from the middle and then roll to either side. That kind of makes sense to me in trying to get the best fit, I guess, or adhesion. <laughs> Say yes to the press. Yeah, so even, even for someone who admittedly loves puns um, and plays on word. This no, it was a little much. Yeah, so they, they have some tips and like, yeah, like I, you try to push down your cuticle and then even like just try to put the nail a little bit underneath the cuticle um, to get a good fit. Yeah, press to the nines. <laughs> Maybe I'll just hold that up for a second in case. Yeah, so you can see it just says to soak in warm water for 10 minutes. And um, for any glue that I did get on the surface of the nail, because I think I was kind of generous with the glue, um, I took some of the Static Nails Remover and I put it on a cotton bud and just tried to kind of go over the glue to try and get any excess off. Uh, so I haven't gotten to the removal stage. Um, unfortunately, I think these are probably going to be on sale before I can give you any kind of long-term wear, but I did at least get to apply them. Yeah, so I, you know, I like it. It's just one of those, like it's more of a novelty for me. I don't think it's going to be my go-to. Like I know some, especially YouTubers, it seems like just constantly have a different set of press-ons on or real manicures, I guess. But yeah, like Hannah Louise Poston was saying how the thing about this type of manicure and what I've experienced before with like static nails is like one will just kind of pop off randomly, right? And like um, Risa was saying, I think she was in a, she was in a restaurant with like Michelle Wong and Samantha March or whatever. And one of her nails just popped off uh, and you can bring the glue with you if you want to have that kind of ability to reapply it, assuming you have the nail, you locate it. 
Uh, I was at Costco and I was going to get like some half and half out of the dairy case and one of my nails like popped off and fell on the floor and I had to pick it up or whatever. So yeah, that that to me is a little a little finicky. I think I would rather just have nail polish, like gel nail polish kind of gradually chip until I want to remove it versus that kind of anxiety. Um, Hannah Louise Poston was talking about how like with the, the tab kind, like the impress, that seems to at least kind of has the umbilical cord connected to your, I don't think she used that phrase, but it's somewhat attached. It's not like totally disconnected. Like the, I think adhesive just stays a little bit more like malleable. It doesn't dry the same way the glue does. Um, so that one, you kind of have a little bit more of a warning in terms of what is about to happen. But like I said, yeah, like I understand the appeal of these and especially for like an event or a night out or you just want something fun and different. Um, they do have like some solid OPI colors. For those, again, it's up to you, but I, I would probably gravitate more towards the, the designs if I were going to pick up any of these. Yeah, and there's also the issue of like, if you do go too long and I don't think these are really super long by most standards, it's still a little bit of a pain to type. So there's that. And with the designs, it's a little bit harder to, I guess, control the length. So I've talked way too much about that. Moving on to March 20th, we have the Smashbox primers. So we have their classic photo finish smooth and blur oil free primer, which I'm wearing on this side of my face. Uh, and then we have their pore minimizing primer, their control mattifying primer, the anti redness primer, their hydrating primer, and their illuminate glow primer. And I'm wearing the illuminate glow on this side. Uh, and honestly, you guys can let me know, but I don't see a huge difference between the two. Like normally I wear some kind of, I should scoot back over, um, some kind of hydrating primer type product before I apply makeup. But yeah, I don't, I don't know that any of these are game changers for me anyway. Uh, next up we have the Kos RX Master Patch Set. Uh, and I talk about these in more depth later on, but basically these are just pure like hydrocolloid um, acne patches. So they cover either like an open blemish or like a white head and try to like suck all the goo out. So they're handy. Uh, it just depends whether you want kind of the pure hydrocolloid or if you want one that has like tea tree or salicylic acid in it. Uh, I think the peace out ones do. Yeah, I think they're always helpful to have on hand. And these, like I say, have three different sizes. So you can kind of pick what you need. And then um, they also have ones that are supposed to be invisible under makeup. You can let me know about that. I don't, I don't really think it's invisible. So for me, it would probably be better just to go without, but anyway. Uh, we have the Stila Heaven's Hue Highlighters. These are 50% off and I haven't tried these, but I think I want to pick up at least one. I think I'm gravitating towards the white one because a white highlighter is always guaranteed to be light enough for me. It looks like it might have a slight lavender kind of hint to it, which is not necessarily what I want these days. But yeah, I just want to try it. If I don't get the white one, I would get kitten, I think, which is a shimmering nude pink. Uh, it looks kind of scary in the pan, like it's going to be super dark. Yeah, I might have to look up some swatches online just to see kind of how it translates in like normal photography. Uh, but yeah, I think I want to pick one of those up. We have the Kapari Beauty Sun Shield Glow Gel. This is a body product, it looks like. SPF 50. I'm not sure what the active ingredient is. SPF 50, four minute sweat and water resistant. Yeah, probably, probably something I won't pick up. It could be pretty though. I, I just, I try to avoid chemical sunscreens, but it could be nice. Okay, so there's that. That's a first time steal online only offer. Then we have some nude sticks, nude screen, daily mineral veil SPF 30. And that is also a first time steal. Okay, so moving on to the 21st. So we have the Beekman 1802 Milk Drops Ceramide Serum. Uh, that will be 2250 
regular price of 45. I think in last week's video, I talked about the sunscreen product that was on sale this past week. Uh, in the end, I decided not to pick it up uh, in part because there was a gift with purchase for Beekman 1802 that included this product, I think, like a little mini of it. And it wasn't adding to my cart. And so I think I just got frustrated and annoyed and I decided not to pick up anything. Uh, like if I could have purchased the sunscreen and then tried this product before the 21st, that would have been ideal. I don't know, I'll take another look at this one. Like I think I did before and I think I think it's pretty good in terms of the ingredients. It has Rosa Damascena flower extract, glycerin, ceramide, goat milk, sodium hyaluronic, squalane, CoQ10. I don't know, it has some good stuff in there. I just, I don't know if I need it kind of thing. Uh, we have some Urban Decay 24 seven shadow sticks. Uh, never tried those. I'm not really a big shadow pencil type person generally. I just, I don't like the feeling of those types of crayons or whatever on my eyeballs. Uh, we have the Bare Minerals Gen Nude Powder Blush. These will be 13 down from 26. It's a first time steal. I think I might try one of these at least. Uh, I think, is it Allie Glines? That's her name, right? Um, I think she was saying that that was like one of her favorite blush formulas. And I know I've tried the like Gen Nude eyeshadow formula and I've enjoyed it. I guess it wouldn't hurt to try another product from this line. I've tried like the bronzer that was Bare Minerals, right? And some other formulas, but I don't think I've tried this one. Uh, and they're all pretty muted colors, which works well for me. I mean, these aren't like house labs colors. Uh, so yeah, I'm pretty sure I could find at least one or two that would suit me. Um, like Call My Blush is a mauve, like that always works. There's a rich chocolate blush, which I thought was an interesting shade for a blush on the mauve, a mid-tone rosy nude. Yeah, so there, there are quite a few that I think could be really pretty on my skin tone. Um, I'll just have to decide. <laughs> I feel like half the time with this sale, like they're half price. Instead of just picking one shade that I want, I end up buying two because it's the same as buying one at full price because like, that makes sense. First rule in government spending. Why build one when you can have two at twice the price? But yeah, I think I think it would be fun to at least try one. Okay, so next up we have some different skincare products, a few from Juice Beauty. We have the Indie Elite CoQ10 Toner, Meaningful Beauty, Keys Soul Care, which I have. I do have this, again, I think I got it in a subscription box. It says, dermatologist developed clean formula, vegan, cruelty-free. It's supposed to illuminate, plump, and revitalize. Key ingredients are niacinamide and rose water. I am hesitant or reluctant to get too much niacinamide because I think it irritates me. Um, but it says, let your inner glow show with this hydrating priming serum in a sheer golden tint that complements all skin tones helps brighten, plump, and smooth the look of skin while imparting a subtle natural illumination alone or under makeup. This has some ingredients that, again, I just don't really care to use personally, uh, like draineal, citronella, like that kind of thing. Like nothing, nothing too out of the ordinary, but again, I'm just trying to be careful. But uh, comes in a nice glass jar. It says, I give myself permission to glow. So uh, there's that. And I thought Keys was supposed to come out with, I washed my hand by the way, from earlier I had swatches on it. Um, I thought Keys was supposed to come out with like some complexion products. I thought I saw that spoiled a while ago, but I haven't seen anything. I know they came out with their blushes. Obviously I haven't been using this. All right, I think, okay. Boy, that took a minute. Um, so yeah, so it's a very light golden. Yeah, it does, it does have a fragrance for sure. So I, I think this product went somewhat viral, if I'm recalling. Like it does give your skin a nice sheen. Not too much of a tint though. Tell how much bronzer I applied today. Pretty strong fragrance. I'm not sure what that would be like on the face, but like I don't know. I'm glad I had it to kind of demo for you guys, but that's that's really its only function that's going to serve in my collection, I guess. Uh, and then the next product is the First Aid Beauty 
KP Smoothing Body Lotion with 10% HA. This is an online only offer. It will be 14 down from 28 and you get six ounces. So that is this size right here. And I am almost done with this product, but I will let you know that I kind of had to force myself to use it up because I've just wanted to return to my Drunk Elephant TLC Glycolic Body Lotion. Uh, this one, I feel like it has a much like thinner texture. So it kind of absorbs easier. Um, that one is the Drunk Elephant and that is the First Aid Beauty. And I do have dry skin, so, so I don't mind a bit of a thicker moisturizer, but like on the body, it's just, sometimes it's nice just to be able to kind of rub it in and go. Uh, and I do have KP, so I kind of like laid off the glycolic body lotion for a little bit because I was struggling with eczema as well. Um, but I've been incorporating it into my routine again. Uh, I will say this one, you get eight fluid ounce. You do get at least a little bit more product. And that one full price is, I don't think I've ever seen Drunk Elephant in the 21 Days of Beauty, uh, but I'm pretty sure this product is sold at Sephora. So if you wanted to add it to your cart for the Sephora sale, this is also 28. So like in the non-sales arena, definitely recommend this one over the First Aid Beauty. And I think the primary reason why, in addition to just the texture and it, I don't know, just being quicker to absorb, this one is one of the few, if not the only, like glycolic body lotions or AHA body lotions like this that doesn't have that glycolic smell. So that to me is a huge win because, I mean, it's not the worst smell in the world. It's just not particularly pleasant either. So for me, I will happily pay, I guess the surcharge or whatever to get this. Yeah, and you do get two additional ounces. If you haven't tried either of those and you would be interested in a KP product like this, for $14, maybe it says it's an online only offer so unfortunately you won't be able to like go into store i don't know if they sell it in store i think they do yeah may maybe just go into an Ulta or sephora and if you get a chance just experiment with the two different um, products to see which one you prefer and if you don't prefer the drunk elephant yeah get that one at 14 dollars. there's also like amlactin from the drugstore you know same same idea but anyway so 22nd we have the jacqueline bronzers uh the origins ginseng spf 40 tinted moisturizer this is one of those that has those little like beads of pigment i always forget uh those little beads of pigment that are supposed to like adjust to your skin tone i don't know those don't really seem to work all that well on most people um this also has a lot of fragrance and it has several different chemical sunscreens. I think ones that I can tolerate, but yeah, just not a product I'm really interested in purchasing. Uh, we have the Live Tinted Hue Stick Multi Sticks and Correctors. Uh, I used the corrector today in Perk. Yeah, Perk. Uh, I think this is their lightest peach tone um, in the correctors for underneath the eyes. And I think for me it just didn't do much like it it wasn't pigmented enough or it wasn't emollient enough or something like I don't know I think I think you can probably skip on those I don't know about the other multi sticks it calls to mind the phrase jack of all trades master of none sometimes these multi-purpose products don't do any one particular thing very well so I would say you can skip it, but you can check out my demo later in the video. Uh, we have some black owned brands that are going to be on sale. So we have some products from Juvia's Place and lots and lots of Juvia's Place. Uh, and then we have um, some Beauty Stack Cosmetics, their Moisture Boost Cream. And I am wearing a lipstick from Oma today, their Badass Icon Matte Lipstick. Uh, I am wearing the shade Maya. Uh, which is a rosy light brown. So I know the 90s are supposed to be coming back. This is honestly a tiny bit too brown for my taste, but you know, we're experimenting with different things today. So it's, 
It's not as silicone-y as like the Pat McGrath matte lipsticks. And it did feel like, because I, I applied it for the first time today because I'd gotten it in a subscription box and just thrown it in a drawer kind of thing. It did feel like it kind of warmed up a bit as I was applying it. And now that I've had it on, it also feels like it's kind of warmed up a little bit. Um, I also have the Urban Decay lip pencil on in the shade Naked. Uh, which I think went very well with it. So the component is really nice. Um, if you see a shade that you'd be interested in trying and you and you enjoy matte lipsticks, uh, I would say go for it. It's going to be twelve dollars. So I think I think that's a decent price for that. Uh, and then we have the Foreo Bear Mini. Um, this is a online only offer, first time steal. Uh, it's going to be about one hundred and ten dollars. You know, if you didn't take advantage of the New Face Mini, maybe take a look at this. It's the same idea. I want to say Mr. Kong's mom has one of these. So maybe go to her channel and search her videos to see if she has any um, dedicated reviews or anything. Yeah, I'll be, I'll be passing because I already have the new face mini and I don't think I need this. So that is it for the 22nd. For the 23rd, we have some Lancome skincare, which I don't use any of, so I'll be skipping. Uh, some Maylie's Cosmetics B Flat Belly Firming Cream. I think I'll skip that. Uh, we have the Urban Decay lip pencils, like I mentioned. Those are online only and they'll be $12.50 down from $25. So again, I think it's a very solid product. Um, not the most hyped because I think these have been out for a while, uh, but they do have a lot of different colors. In fact, I might get the shade Ozone actually now that I look at it because I think I have like a Makeup Forever product like that before where it's basically just like a clear lip liner so it just kind of helps to like keep the border of your lipstick I might pick that up I, I know I was looking at it not too long ago and I think Sephora has like a similar type product but if that's going to be on sale for $12.50 I might I might snag it uh so yeah so do recommend checking those out um just your traditional like sharpenable type pencil. Uh, the Dr. Brandt Pores No More Pore Refiner Primer, that is 50% off. And then we have some Lime Prime Matte Velveteen Lipsticks. This will be a first time steal and online only. On the 24th, we have a surprise steal from Peter Thomas Roth. So we don't know what that's going to be. Uh, the Too Faced Better Than Sex Mascara in both the traditional black and the new or newer chocolate like their brown shade are going to be on sale. It's not my favorite mascara. I'm wearing it today. Like it does have nice volume, but it doesn't keep the curl or the lift in my lashes the way I like. So not my favorite mascara, but uh, like today I used a sample. You've probably come across a sample or something um, in the past. So you probably know whether you like it or not. Uh, this one is a busy day. Okay, so next up we have the Clinique Happy Eau de Parfum. This is a first time steal. And I just have a little mini of. It says, uh, Happy Eau de Parfum Spray is Clinique's best-selling women's fragrance. Every citrus bright floral fresh note holds the promise of a happy day. And this has, it says, a hint of citrus, a wealth of flowers, a mix of emotions. First launched in 97 and formulated with happiness as its North Star, Happy is Clinique's best-selling women's fragrance today. It combines fresh, vibrant notes of ruby red grapefruit and bergamot with soft, central ones, Hawaiian wedding flower, spring mimosa. Wear it and be happy. Um, so I haven't sprayed anything today. And this is a nice mini because it is actually a sprayer. So it did crack me up a little bit because like with these nails and this fragrance, I definitely feel like I'm back in the 90s. I graduated from high school in 2003. So I guess this came out when I was in middle school. I was watching Legally Blonde and like the intro scene, I think they have nails like this and then they have like the whole like Elle's vanity, I guess. Uh, and they have like OPI polish and Clinique and I don't know. It's very, it's very nostalgic and trippy if, if you want to go take a look at that. So it's a nice fragrance. I, you know, I didn't have like a clear scent memory of this um, before I sprayed it again. To me, it does read more floral than citrus. It reminds me a bit of the Jo Malone Mimosa and Cardamom. So if you're familiar with this fragrance, it's like they took the mimosa note 
without the spiciness of the cardamom and added just that little bit of citrus instead. Um, so if you like that kind of mimosa scent, I don't think you see mimosa all that commonly as a fragrance note. I'm sure if I searched for it, I could find it. And I think when I first got this, I was thinking it was mimosas as in like the champagne and uh, orange juice cocktail. So I was expecting something citrusy and a little bubbly or sweet or whatever. Uh, but no, it's a flower, so there you go. I wonder if that's how the cocktail got its name. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so definitely does have that floral note. And again, this is a very common fragrance. My lipstick on my teeth, oh no. I guess if you're, if you're a member of Gen Z and you want to relive some of that 90s nostalgia, you know, that, that's the way to do it. Okay, so moving on, we have some Smashbox eyeliners. I used one of those today. I used the purple one. Uh, really good if you want like a very precise line. It's not like the most emollient one. And I just have to address that. Uh, the eyeshadow look I did today, while I think ultimately I like how it came out, I did it after I did the base. And the, the fallout is, is pretty extreme. I don't know if you're seeing it on camera or not. Um, I used the Nabla Dreamy palette. It's going to be on sale during the last week. So I wanted to use one of those palettes today and then I'll use the other one next week. But I think you can, you can see the fallout. <laughs> I feel like I have some uh, additional freckles or something. Okay, so the Smashbox liner, Hopefully you got a good look there. Yeah, like it is pretty easy to, you know, draw a wing with a pencil if you want to do that. Uh, as I say later, it has like this twist mechanism where it twists up product like into the cap. So it forms that kind of perfect point uh, without you having to like sharpen a pencil or whatever. So if you like that kind of functionality, um, that would be a good one to check out. Uh, I have several of those at least. So there was a time when I was really into them. We have the Murad AHA BHA Exfoliating Cleanser, not really for my skin type. Uh, this one is interesting. This is a first time seal online only offer from Bobbi Brown. It's the Crushed Oil Lip Gloss. I think I might pick up just one of these. There's a few different shimmery shades and then a lot of solids. So I think I might pick up one just to try the formula. Again, I think Allie Glein said that she liked it. Yeah, just kind of curious, just trying to, I guess, expand my, my makeup knowledge here. Uh, and then we have the Crepe Erase Ultra Smoothing Neck Repair. That's a first time steal. Yeah, I don't really use neck creams, so I'm gonna pass on that. Okay, and then the last day here, we have the Buxom Surprise Steal. Uh, I used one of their blushes today. Uh, I used the one in Dolly on the off chance that it is their surprise steal, but it could be something else. So there's that. The It Cosmetics CC Cream Illumination SPF 50, if you want to try that. Uh, some more It Cosmetics brushes. Quite a few actually. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty good on brushes, especially synthetic ones. Like I usually go for BK Beauty. Uh, but if you do need some good brushes, I mean, they're going to be between 12 and 18. So um, maybe worth looking at if you need a brush. Uh, we have the Benefit Goof Proof Eyebrow Pencil. Haven't tried that one. That one is 50% off. I think that one has like more of the, like the triangle head to the pencil instead of just like a very small one. So if you like to do your brows in a hurry, that one might be good to look at. Uh, I've heard most people, I think, tend to prefer the other Benefit pencil, but anyway. Uh, and then the last product here is the Exuvian's Triple Microdermabrasion Face Polish. And yeah, I try to avoid physical exfoliants with the like exception of just like a washcloth or that kind of thing. So that is my kind of roundup of the next week. Uh, let's see, just to recap, I think the only products I personally am going to pick up is a Stila highlighter, a Bare Minerals blush, possibly the Beekman 1802 serum. Oh, like maybe that Urban Decay pencil, Bobbi Brown gloss. Yeah, I think that's it. All right, so that's gonna do it for the kind of run through of all the items. Uh, let's jump into the demo. Okay, so let's get started with these Cosrx Master Patch pimple patches, I guess they are. 
Uh, so I did my skincare not too long ago, so I feel like my skin is looking uh, quite hydrated. Uh, I try not to apply these, I guess, immediately after moisturizer. If I can, I'll like wash my face, then apply one, and then put moisturizer on so that you don't have that kind of uh, barrier to the patch actually sticking. And I'm looking for the ones, yeah, these ones. So uh, this comes with 90 patches. It's the North America and EU version. I don't know what the other, I guess, regional variations might be, but uh, for this one, you get, it says the Master Patch Original Fit times 72, intensive care in three different sizes, seven millimeter, 10 millimeter, and 12, and that's the actual size. And what can I use that is like easily identifiable? Anyway, you can get out a ruler and figure out what 10 millimeters or whatever looks like. Uh, but they also have this clear fit times 18. So these are supposed to be ultra thin, invisible under makeup with a tapered edge. And these are also 10 millimeters and that's the actual size. So I don't really have any kind of active breakouts that I wanna put a patch like this on, um, but I'm just gonna try and I guess demo it for the sake of this video. I guess I'm just looking to see if there's any good candidates here. So I think this is something. It's not really a blemish, but it's some kind of like clogged pore. And I'm just gonna put it on there so we can see kind of whether it is invisible. So all right, so that is the patch. Honestly, I don't go out with these patches on, but I suppose if you really had to, you could. Uh, and just so you know, I'll show you a full one. So this one I've taken some off, but like this is what the full sheet looks like. And you get three of these in the pack. So those are the different sizes. Okay, so these I think are just, if I don't mention it before, I think they are just hydrocolloid, so they don't have any kind of active ingredients in them. Like some have um, salicylic acid or tea tree. I think these are more just kind of that absorption and covering function instead of any kind of like active uh, treatment. So I like the option of having one that's just kind of bare bones, but just know kind of what you're getting there. And then for primer, so I'm going to use uh, the Smashbox primer. I think I'm actually going to use the Photo Finish Illuminate Glow primer, which is their vitamin C. This of course is their traditional Photo Finish foundation primer, which is silicone based. If you didn't pick up the Lancome primer, but you wanted something similar, this is kind of one of Smashbox long, long-standing uh, products. It just kind of helps, I don't know, smooth out the surface, uh, makes it feel very slippery. Uh, but I want to try instead the Illuminate Glow. Actually, since I have two, I might as well do one on one half and one on the other. I could have sworn I had a sample of their green primer, which is like a redness um, type one, but couldn't find it. If anything, I think it was just like a packet sample. So I feel like sometimes those just escape into a black hole. All right, so this is the half with the silicone primer. I think it took down a bit of the kind of dewiness, uh, but let's see what the illuminating one looks like. All right, so that's what it looks like on the back of the hand. It looks like there is some kind of pearl in it. So this would, to make sure I keep track here, probably not be my first choice from this lineup, but I'm just kind of working with what I have. And I'm kind of, I guess, being a little careful to blend in around that kind of pimple patch. Yeah, so I think this one does look a little bit more illuminated. Of course, you know, rubbing my face tends to make things look a little red for a moment. 
Okay, so we did that and next up we have the corrector. So haven't actually tried this yet. Uh, so part of the reason why I like doing uh, these types of videos is that it forces me to dig out products from my makeup collection that may have been a little bit neglected uh, and force me to try them. So uh, this is the Live Tinted Hue Stick. It's for eye, cheek, and lip. And this is in the shade Perk, which I think is the lightest kind of peachy shade for correcting. It has a nice, I wanna say this is like an aluminum tube. It's just like a pencil crayon style applicator and it twists up like so. Uh, so I do usually use a corrector. We have some serious dark circles here. It's, it's a little kind of stiff, to be honest. I feel like I'm able to kind of blend it out with my finger though. So you can see the difference there. Like this still looks dark, but it doesn't look quite as blue maybe. And I think this is a South Asian funded or founded brand. So I'm pretty sure they have some darker shades to that. So if you have a tan or deep or rich complexion, I remember way back when people with like deeper or tan skin tones were actually using like red lipstick underneath their eyes to correct. Now we have a lot more. So to be honest, I don't, I don't feel like that did much. I am still working on filming the like Tarte corrector video I have in mind. And I'd say either the Tarte or the e.l.f. corrector is probably gonna be a better buy than this, even at half price. I just don't feel like that did a lot for me compared to some other ones. Okay, so satisfied my curiosity with this. They do also have some not corrector shades, I think. They're kind of like multi-purpose sticks that you can use, so uh, you can check those out. At one point I thought uh, they just had those other non-corrector shades on sale, but it seems like Ulta updated its uh, page with all the deals and everything. Uh, so I'm trying to keep it to products that are sold at Ulta. And I have the new L'Oreal foundation, but I haven't used this before. So I think instead uh, I'm going to use this Revlon foundation. I've used it, I think, a couple times now. So I have mine in the shade 109, which is light ivory. So far, I've been liking this foundation. And I'm just going to go ahead and apply it on like half my face just so you can kind of see the coverage. Even though this particular product isn't on sale, it's still, I think, relatively affordable. It might even be cheaper at like Target. <laughs> All right, so. That is kind of the before and after. I think, you know, it does a nice job. Um, I do have dry skin. I think I might need a little bit more than what I pumped out initially. And I'm just using my damp beauty blender here. And here, here we have the test, I guess, in terms of how it looks over makeup. So I'm just kind of pouncing and if you do want to try to wear one of these under makeup, I would recommend using a sponge or some kind of brush where we are not kind of dragging too much. I think this was the side with the illuminating primer. So you can see a bit of that kind of golden texture. And Ideally, you probably want to use some kind of like matte. This is the Beauty Pie foundation brush, by the way. Obviously not sold at Ulta, but I feel like it's a good brush for this kind of technique. So yeah, so to me, I think it's still pretty obvious depending on, I guess, the severity of your blemish and whether it's kind of scabbed over or not you might want to just kind of go in with a with a concealer on top instead of having the pimple patch but obviously you don't really want to put makeup in an open wound so 
anyway. Uh, so I'm going to use the Anastasia Brow Wiz. I used this last time as well, but I think this is actually on sale this time. And I am not a huge brow pencil person. I find it just takes a little bit more time than I usually want to spend, but it's a very solid brow pencil and I would recommend it if you do like brow pencils. I have it in the shade taupe. All right, and then I'll just finish that off again with the clear brow gel that I used last time again. This was on sale during the first week. Let me know if anyone picked this up. So that's good enough for me. Like I said, I don't get too, too finicky with my brows. Usually I just use a tinted brow gel for filming. Uh, for concealer, this is really just to satisfy my own curiosity because the new Too Faced, I forget what the exact name of it, but it's like kind of MAC face and body style foundation type product is coming out next week and I'm trying to figure out what shade I should order. So I have this one in Cloud and then I also have, have the shade Snow, I believe. So this is obviously like a mini size and if they had just gone with, okay, that's, that's a bit yellow, I think. This is no. If they had just gone with the same shade names as their Ethereal Light concealer, I would have been I would have been golden, but unfortunately they went with the kind of born this way style. Hmm. Neither one is probably ideal. I might just try to kind of mix them a little bit. I kind of feel like since that corrector didn't do as much, I almost need <laughs> the heavier concealer, although this is I guess a heavier concealer than I usually use. All right, I think I think that's good enough. We're obviously going with very, very bright under eyes. So I think the next thing I have to demo are eye products. So I'm going to jump off camera and finish kind of the rest of my complexion. Uh, and then I'll be back uh, for that portion. Okay, so I have applied contour, bronzer, powder, eye primer. I use the Fenty eye primer, the Oma contour in white pearl and the L'Oreal Bronzer in Fair or Pale. Um, so that is what that looks like. It's a very kind of soft, nice bronzer, I think. Uh, so yeah, so let's get into one of these Nabla palettes. So I have two and we'll see if I need to set, set my primer with anything else. Okay, so I have the Side by Side palette and the dreamy palette i think these might actually be on sale during week three uh but i don't think i have a palette to demo that week so i thought i would go ahead and try this one i'm kind of i'm kind of feeling the dreamy palette uh which looks like so and this doesn't have any kind of matte cream shade so i'll just use rarity from the side by side I like to give myself just kind of a nice even canvas. So um, I'll use this in next week's video. Uh, but for this one, I think what I wanna do, I'm gonna try that lullaby shade, kind of a mauvey plum. I usually like to test out shades on a lighter brush just to kind of see how pigmented they are. And then if I feel like I need a more diffused look because they're not as pigmented, I'll go in with a bigger brush. And when I say they're not as pigmented, that's not kind of a ding on the quality of the shadows. Some shadows just aren't meant to be super pigmented. It's kind of the, the goal, I guess you could say. Because when you do have super pigmented shades, like you think about pressed pigments in some brands, uh, in that case, you, I'm gonna go back into, actually, I think I might try that Bonjour shade. Uh, in that case, you sometimes sacrifice like blendability for pigment. So I'm just reaching for this palette because it has some kind of basic matte shades that I wanna use. Obviously you could just use whatever kind of basic matte palette you have lying around. Uh, I don't think there's anything kind of unique about the shades from the side by side that I used. Uh, and then going back into Lullaby, the lower lashes. And I do take my shadow a little bit higher kind of into my brow because I have hooded lids. Uh, so I want it to show up. 
trying to decide if I want to go super purple. All right, let's let's start off kind of easy here. Uh, I'm going to try that Inception shade on a rougher 28. And this is a dry brush. I think a little bit of fallout. Okay, so then I'm going to try this Delirium shade that like more... It's interesting because when you put it in the... You can kind of see in the mirror there like how much blue reflects in certain lights. Um, so again, using the same brush, might have been better to place that one on the outer corner actually. Yeah, and this one is getting fallout. All right, I kind of want to see what happens if I wet my brush. So uh, Mac Fix Plus will be on sale, I think the first Sunday of the third week. So I think it's helpful to have some kind of spray like that around if you like a more intense look. I guess I would recommend doing your eyes first if you plan to do kind of a more dramatic look. I should also mention that this palette is not the newest palette in my collection. So I'm just going back into that Inception shade. I feel like I'm giving you Evil Queen vibes. I think I might have to blend, blend this crease a little bit. I do have quite a bit of fallout as you can tell. So I didn't put anything on this brush, I'm just working to blend. All right, and then for the inner corner, I think what I'm going to do, I'm gonna take the um, Angie A505, the Angie and BK brush, and I wanna try this Byzantine shade, the gold. So this is a dry brush and it's a synthetic, whereas the rougher was natural hair. I think that one is entirely natural hair. I'm sure I'm loving this. So I'm just trying to blend it into the purple. It's kind of pretty like that. I almost feel like I'm applying gold leaf or something. Again, fallout. And then I think I want just a little bit more of an inner corner highlight. Boy, <laughs> that's not great. The problem of kind of flying by the seat of your pants and not planning. All right, I'm gonna take the Refer 26 and go into that white shade, Immaculate. All right, so I'm gonna leave it there. I can't say that that's like the best eye look I've ever done. I think it's kind of interesting, but maybe not the best. Uh, so moving on to the Smashbox liner. So I have two shades. I have the Violetta, which is a purple, and the Sumatra, which is a brown. So I think I'm gonna use the purple. It is really more of a brown purple than a purple purple. Like that's the brown and the purple next to each other. And the feature of these is that um, they're called the Always Sharp Waterproof Gold Liner because they have some kind of feature in the cap where like you twist them up into the cap and they form that kind of like perfect um, point so that you know you have more precision with your eyeliner. I I like these for time. I think for me, I've just kind of changed how I like to do my eyeliner. So I prefer something a little bit creamier, uh, but they're not bad. Let's see if I can do my baby wing like as you've seen normally I like to kind of run my brush over the tip of the pencil and granted with this eye look you don't really see the eyeliner too much but yeah if kind of precision is your is your aim and you don't don't want to have to break out a brush or anything then you know these might be worth looking into and they are they are waterproof. So uh, that's it for the eyeliner, I think. And then I'll just apply some of the Too Faced Better Than Sex because why not? And I just have a little mini sample here. I feel like this mascara is so well known and so kind of ubiquitous that I don't really need to say much about it. It's a little difficult with the sample to kind of get into the 
outer corner. I guess I'll apply this on my lower lashes, although usually I would use like the Clinique bottom lash and tubing formula. You know, my chief thing about this mascara is just that because my lashes are straight, it's just not the best at like holding a really nice curl. So it's never been my favorite, but you probably know by now whether you like this mascara, I'm guessing. I think good for volume, it's just not, not quite the lift in the curl that I like to see in my lashes. Okay, so what do we have next? So I have some lip products, uh, but I do wanna apply some blush because I haven't done that yet. And I don't know that these are going to be on sale because uh, they weren't listed, but there is a Buxom surprise steal one day. Uh, so I thought I would break out these Wanderlust blushes. Uh, this one is in the shade Mykonos, which is more of a peach. And then I have Dolly and Ibiza. I'm guessing it's going to be Dolly as more of a neutral mauve. Um, but this one is Ibiza. I think I want to go that way. So yeah, I'm guessing it's probably going to be one of the Buxom lip products, um, which I am not a huge fan of. I just don't like kind of plumping products generally, but in case they do have the blushes. All right, and again, that one is the shade Dolly. It's probably one of their, I think, most well-known shades of anything. Do I want highlighter? I think, honestly, I might just want more blush and more bronzer. All right, uh, so let's put something on the lips. So I have a Urban Decay lip pencil uh, in the shade Naked. So I think this might've been like a little sample size that I got at one point, um, but I think it's a nice kind of neutral mauve again that will work. Urban Decay does make a very solid pencil formula, whether it's their eye pencils or the lip pencils. And then for the lips, um, I have the, again, Oma Badass Icon Matte Lipstick in the shade Maya. So this is a really nice component. It has the brand's name kind of in a relief, I think you call it. And then it says a badass does not talk about being a badass on um, the tube and it is magnetic. So really nice component. Um, and it says badass on the um, component there. I haven't actually tried this one. I got it in some kind of subscription box. I think it works well with that lip liner. It's a little brown maybe for what I would ideally want, but so maybe not the most flattering uh, matte lipstick, but I don't know that many are truly flattering. All right, cleaning up the lip line a little bit. I don't like it when my lips are too kind of overdrawn. I just think it looks weird. I'll leave it there. I feel like it has warmed up a little bit. Yeah, I think I think that's everything. So I hope you guys found that helpful. Again, make sure that you are subscribed uh, and keep your eyes peeled for the video next week where I'll talk about the last week's worth of items. And until next time, I hope you guys are all doing well and staying safe and I will talk to you soon. Bye.